Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Plumy Tech Talks. I am your host for the Plumy Tech Talks, Scott Lowe. I work in the developer relations team at Pulumi, and I'm glad that you are joining us for another episode. I am joined this time around by Paul Hicks. Paul is a member of our Paluminaries. That is Pulumi's Community Champions Program. And if you're interested in becoming a Paluminary, reach out to me. You can hit me at uh, da at and I'll be happy to fill you in all the details. But Paul is a preliminary, and he also runs his own consulting company called Centify. So I'm super excited to have Paul join us this time around. So Paul, why don't you jump in, introduce yourself for those who are uh, joining us. Hi, Scott. Thanks very much. I'm Paul. I've been a software developer for lots of different employers over the last 28 years. I currently work at Centify, which is, uh, though I'd like to own it, I can't say I do, unfortunately. And... My role there is mostly in developer experience improvement. Uh, I do a lot of work in helping teams that haven't been so great at testing or automation, build pipelines, and of course, infrastructure as code, infrastructure development in general, and moving to the cloud. That last bit in particular has sort of dominated my last four to six years with Centify. And yeah, we were having a lot of success in that area, thanks to Pulumi in particular. Oh, awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. So, um, you know, I, I think your use case is very interesting to talk about uh, how you use Plumi because you you do work for a consulting company, so you are helping clients. And you're able to kind of see this from a couple of different perspectives. One, how Plumi has helped you as a consultant. And I'm familiar with that sort of use case because I first found Plumi myself when I was working in the consulting field. And so I know the benefits it brought to, to my role, but also you're able to talk about how Plumi has helped your clients and what you're doing with them. So do you mind just spending a few minutes first talking about, you know, how Plumi has helped you personally uh, in your role? And then maybe we can shift from there into some of the benefits you've seen your clients uh, see uh, or clients have realized from also using Plumi. Mm. Oh, I'd say there's 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 a big overlap. They're very similar benefits. When I was first getting into this domain, the infrastructure as code domain, Terraform was was the tool of choice. Uh, and I, as a general purpose developer before that, just found it a bit hard going. It wasn't, it didn't fit the models that I had in my head. So when I found Pulumi and experimented with it, with my first small project, I found it was just easier to get to get things working the way I wanted them. It was just that much less effort. The tests in particular are, are a passion of mine and proving that what I'm doing is right and that it's what's been asked for, which is an often overlooked part of testing. Not, not that it works, but that it does the right thing. And Plumi made that so much easier. And as a side effect of that, handing over code and explaining to the next, to, to, to the clients, developers, what the code is doing and why it's been written and so forth is just that much easier. Uh, you've got code that they understand, and it's been written in a language that they choose, and it comes with tests which explain the purpose of the various components. So um, th those are the, the main reasons that we have found it helpful to us as a in a consulting model, as opposed to in a, I want to choose any tool. The, the handover, the tech transfer part of the job was that much easier. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, one of the real benefits of Plumi is the fact that you're using languages that you're already familiar with instead of learning something else. I wonder if you could expand a little bit on like, you know, some of the benefits that your your clients have seen in terms of, you know, are, are they able to realize, you know, sort of faster deployments, you know, faster time to market because they can you know, innovate more quickly. You know, any, any sort of anecdotes that you're able to share there based on your experience of using Plumi and interacting with, you know, a pretty wide variety of clients via your consulting practice. Mm, yeah. I don't know if time to market or anything has been a major factor for any of them. The ability to iterate through multiple environments and to have lower cost, shorter lived environments has been a big, a big help. It, it's, and, and that, I suppose, isn't intrinsically Pulumi. It's infrastructure's code and, and the, the ability to do it through SDKs and so forth. But yes, I think the change from doing things point and click through an AWS console or, or even through a, a rack down in their server room is is the big improvement from that point of view from, from the selection that you provided but i think at least with the, the parts of the companies that i work with it's the developer experience has been the big benefit the, the ability to have code reviews and really working on the code because i'm working on the code my team is working on the code their team is at best doing code reviews and still have them able to read the code and to understand it and to say 
well, thanks, Santify. That's a wonderful job. We'll take it from here. Because, you know, we, we like the whole player coach approach. We want them to be involved, but they often can't or don't want to be or are paying us specifically not to be involved. But then they change their mind and they want to take over. And, and Pulumi and, and writing it in a language they understand and the ability to, to wrap it all in tests has been key to that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, over over the years, you know, working uh, as a consultant, working with a lot of different clients and a lot of different industries, you know, are there a particular sort of architectural patterns that you've seen emerge that uh, you know that you have where you, you've been able to apply Pulumi to some you know great success? Well, software patterns, uh, I suppose, the testability requirement means that the Terraform essentially just one long stream of resources, just run them and it works. It doesn't work very well. So having something much closer to OO through Pulumi's component resources and having the testability built in, the, the state, I'm, I'm going to do everything except deploy the resources, the state management and the input to output mapping and so forth has been great. So object orientation has been an architecture, I suppose. What other sorts of architectures uh, would you be thinking of? The only other one that I can think of as a developer that I've changed my mind on over the past five years has been mono repos uh, and uh, as a as a source code layout architecture and making those work. And and since Pulumi became fully, I mean, perhaps aware is the wrong word, but works well with um, Yarn two and Yarn three, uh, I found that that's really helped compartmentalize the various chunks of larger projects and, and having them work in mono repos now. But I can't think of any, for example, deployment architecture or runtime model that is or is not enabled well through through Pulumi distributed systems, containers, uh, monolithic application servers. They all work well with Pulumi and I have never had any, never had to choose between them. Okay. The only, the only um, software architecture that I have worked with in Pulumi and have determined has failed is is inversion of control dependency injection through uh, Nest.js and, and TypeScript. And that was really hard to get working well. It just didn't fit. And perhaps it was my own way of thinking, but the amount of extra boilerplate that needed to be needed to be added, which was essentially a heavier weight, a heavier version of the boilerplate that's provided by or that's required by Pulumi, it was just really did not make life easy. So we abandoned that and went straight to um, went straight back to something closer to OO. And that's um, that's where we are now on that particular project. All right. Yeah. What about, um, you know, maybe organizational patterns within the, the companies that you work with? You know, is it common to see, you know, this very, uh, very popular shift left mentality, you know, these days where you're pushing infrastructure onto developers? Or do you tend to see more central teams that are producing things that are then being consumed by their development teams? Our clients fall into two groups. There's the um, the ones with practically no development in-house at all. So it's all outsourced to us. So that is fully shifted left because that's the way we work. The developers are the one, same ones who write the code as who deploy the infrastructure and who operate it day to day. And then there's the um, clients with in-house development teams who I'm pretty sure exclusively in our um, domain have no interest in the infrastructure code. So they're application developers who want to know that it does its thing. They they have decided containers and Kubernetes, and that's beyond that they have no interest. No, that's right. So for those organizations where they do have their own in-house development, and they're not really interested in the infrastructure, is there? Are you observing the emergence of like a you know let's say let's call it a platform engineering team that helps with that sort of stuff for them to consume? I would like to say yes. There's certainly a greater interest in that idea. I'm just thinking in particular of one client. Their development team has uh, spawned some people with more interest in in the area who could who could be said to be doing that. But I think by and large, we've been taken on in cases where clients don't want to form, don't want to change the way they're developing. They want to stick with application developers, and we've been taken on as the others because our approaches, as I mentioned before, the, the player coach approach, where, where we try to work with the team as much as is possible. The best we've been able to get uh, for this one particular larger client that I'm thinking of is a, a design, a peer design and code review, but actual app dev or rather infrastructure dev is, is exclusively on our side of the fence, which isn't awesome, but the unit tests make that a little bit easier. It's part of their build pipeline, which is great. And then their deployment pipeline, of course, is, is almost entirely in our hands at this point. But at least our code is in their build pipeline. So 
they see when I make a mistake or when, when one of my colleagues makes a mistake and they become interested in it and they help develop it. So, so that does shift them a bit left. But I'm also glad to say that we have no right-leaning development teams that we work with. I, I guess we're taken on because shift left is something that they're, they have as an ideal. Most of our clients, or all of our clients, they're just time constrained, cash constrained, and need to focus on time to market, application time to market, as opposed to deployment time to market. Because these days with Pulumi and a, you know, once you're over the initial hurdle of deployment, the um, time to market is tiny. You know, you redo a deployment. Oh, I need an extra cluster over there for this other background set of jobs. Well, there's, that's two days development, and from then on, it's just leave it alone. Just keep deploying, deploy, deploy. Yeah, it sounds like it. Would, it. would it be fair to say that, it, I guess, in some respects, hearing you talk about how Centify interacts with the clients, in some respects, it almost sounds like Centify is becoming a, a form of a platform engineering team for some of your clients because they don't want to make or are not prepared to make that investment internally. It doesn't make sense for whatever reason. Yes, that would be the prior, that would, that would be the, the main model for most of our clients. We do operate the develop and operate the infrastructure and application for some of our clients where we are a full outsourced development house and and operational center but for most of them we are the the extra team near the end of the line we actually don't run very many applications um, full time we we monitor a fair bit but it's nearly always reporting issues to uh, to in-house teams which is actually quite a nice comfortable place to be i know i would like to be in there with them and and to have a greater concern for how efficient and how well reported and how uh, how well the load is monitored and, and whether or not things recover automatically. But generally, that last bit of improvement and optimization of, of processes is prompted by the clients and customers. And honestly, we don't actually see it that often. You know, sometimes they'll come with us with a change that comes, that is prompted by uh, a post-mortem of some some description. But generally, it's new features is, is what we're tasked with. Gotcha. Okay. I wonder if, you know, like out of out of the experience, you've talked a lot about how, you know, the, the being able to test and run a set of tests to ensure that the infrastructure you know, does what it's supposed to do, like it behaves the way it's supposed to behave, the way it's intended to behave, right? And and that was a, a key reason why, you know, you chose Pulumi as an individual developer. And one of the things that's made it you know, a great choice for use with your clients because they can see the tests and that kind of becomes a common glue that, you know, like, hey, we are testing it. It does exactly what you wanted it to do. You know, here you go, right? I wonder if there are other like, you know, real benefits or, or you know, key results that you observed out of any of the, you know, projects or, or, or clients you've worked with, at, you know, in a high level general sense, of course, that maybe you'd want to share with other people who might be thinking about adopting Pulumi and be like, well, you know, we saw blah, right? Um, anything in particular jump to mind there? The ability to trial proof of concept to do multiple versions of things and to test in production, as it were, to, or to test in a, in a staging environment, just to try a new version is is so much simpler. You don't have to spin up a new account. You know, you just I'm just going to create the whole environment again right beside the existing one and uh, try it this slightly different way. Just deploy from a branch. That that's massive. We have clients who demand things like canary testing and blue green and so on but haven't invested in the support there's no dark launching there's no software backing it up it all has to be done manually and with pulumi doing it manually uh, creating a whole new environment from scratch is just that much easier and faster so that's that, that's a, a great reason for people who are new to move into cloud or organizations new to move into cloud a great way for them to realize the benefits quickly they model their production requirements once, get it working, and then they just tweak that model a little bit over and over and over. And, and they don't have to worry about launching it to production because they're not all the way over there doing things live like like um, Etsy or AWS might be, but they can make up a, a test environment in an hour or day or whatever it is, depending on how complicated their environment is. So that's yeah. a big one. And I think the, the features that Pulumi launches and that they're reading about, because I'm promoting it to them, give them great ideas for how they would like to change in the future. So it is good to see backlogs of tech debt elimination coming up, like Pulumi deployments, Pulumi ESC, and, and that sort of thing. Give them great ideas and talking points, which more often than not become features in the future. Uh, we've, we've already achieved several of those with, with even the largest, slowest moving clients, uh, which is always great to see. Uh, change is very hard for the sorts of clients who hire us. So, well, not all of them, some of them. And being able to push forward any sort of change is sometimes quite a, a success. And um, Pulumi does make all that easier. It's just 
the iteration time is, is way down and the, the concept that you can prove it and actually see have your behind the scenes team your your back office workers use it without affecting the production system at all and they go wow i don't have to pay forty thousand dollars a month for for a second set of blades or whatever it's lovely oh yes yeah excellent excellent that's that's a great example uh you know i think there there may be times when as Pulumi users we kind of forget about the power of being able to quickly create a new stack, spin up a bunch of infrastructure, you know, have an application deployed in that infrastructure, do some testing of a branch, you know, some changes in the application or whatever, verify that, yeah, it works okay, it's fine, and then tear all that down and do all yeah. that in the space of, you know, a few hours, depending on what kind of infrastructure it is, maybe even less than that, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and the power that that brings and being able to iterate very quickly and test these things very quickly and verify as you pointed out, that they work as they ex are expected to work. Absolutely. Um, yeah, look, looking ahead, uh, any any sort of um, cool things you have planned uh, or uh, on the horizon that you're going to try and tackle with Pulumi? I think a lot of them is catching up with the, the speed of Pulumi development. I, I, have, I was so excited when Pulumi deployments came out, and I still don't have a single client using them, but we have managed to get somebody across the line with that, and we are going to start using them very soon so that's that's on on my horizon that's what i'm keen and excited to look forward to beyond that i think everything else will be will, will be micro steps we haven't got anybody looking to switch to the cloud first cloud native model at all it's nearly always hosted environments in the cloud so i'm i'm now very familiar with load balancers and network management and and then at the bottom there's an ecs or eks cluster and Everything in there is a, is, is a mystery to me. So I'm, it's not very cloud native. It's it's lifted and shifted into the cloud. And it's better than it was before. And it's quite possibly even less expensive, even though usually that model ends up being more expensive if it's a vanilla lift and shift. Thanks to the experience we have, it's often less expensive. But that is mostly what we're working on. So getting people, getting my clients out of that model and into a cloud native model is where I'd like to go. But honestly, yeah, it's not happening very fast, I'm afraid. But that's okay. The older models are great, and they are well supported by Pulumi, and they're rock solid. I mean, they, they, we're talking about patterns and and ways of hosting applications in the cloud that have been around since the beginning of cloud, since long before cloud native, really. And they inspire a lot of confidence in the customers. And Pulumi inspires a lot of confidence that they can do it again and again and again. And at the end of the month their bill's only gone up a hundred dollars because we destroyed it as soon as we finished using it, you know, so that's brilliant. So for me personally, I would love to move more cloud native and more shift left and to bring my customers with me, but I'm, I'm bringing them along one step at a time. And some of the steps are very small. That's all right. Uh, the old saying, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So everybody has to start somewhere, right? Yes, absolutely. And they've all, they're all in the cloud. They've all got Pulumi supporting them. So the big, the biggest and hardest steps are made. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, hey, Paul, thanks so much for uh, joining me, for sharing your experience as a Pulumi user. Thanks for being a Pluminary and supporting our community. And um, uh, folks, thanks for joining in and watching uh, this episode of Pulumi Tech Talks. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the conversation uh, with Paul and I, and I uh, hope that you've learned something and I hope you're excited to try out something. So we encourage you to uh, you know, give a tryout for any of the features or the technologies that uh, Paul mentioned, like Pulumi deployments or Pulumi ESC. You can uh, get started on any of those by going to Pulumi.com and just clicking on the Get Started button. Thanks again, Paul. Thank you.